Yes. Yeah. So you're going to add them up and then divide it by 6. There's so a the number score here. underneath the box. So look, 4 plus 1 is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So put 11 and then divide it by 6. I put two hundred and divided by six. And you should have a score between one and five. <laughs> six times one is close to twenty two. You are wrong. What do you have? If it's first was a decimal decimal. It's it doesn't matter. Yeah, what was so the first number? Three. three. Okay, so three. three. So here's three. Where's the three. It's our score divided by six, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So did anyone have a five? Nope. Anyone have a four? Mr. Pachi, you so you're very resilient. How do you feel about these emotions? Do you feel that you struggle with these emotions? No. <laughs> of these that I'm going to read to you, these components. Right now. I don't. Right. And remember, these things change. These are temporary. I right just now. answered my, I got a two. Okay, I'm obviously going through a very difficult time. That would have changed three years ago. Three years ago, oh my God, I would have been too happy and overly resilient and I would have never thought that I would be in the situation that I'm in now. So these are going to change situationally, okay? But let's read these 10 components of resilience again and see which ones do you have. Optimism, yes, altruism, so, so, yes. A moral yeah. compass? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Faith and spirituality? So, it's so. We're going a little lower lately, but it's still there. Okay. <laughs> Humor? What? Humor? Yes. Yes. You have a role model? Yes. Okay. You have social support? Yes. Do you face your fears? I try to. Okay. Do you have a meaning or a purpose in your life? Yes. And do you train, like get additional training in your life to move forward? I think I, I try okay. my own way. I mean, I, I'm always looking for new ways of to improving and learn. my life, improving things. So you see that she got a high score related to having a reduction in these, whereas a lot of us have a lot of guilt. Um, who has a three? One, two, three. Okay. Two. Okay, you can raise it to a three. Two point three if you want. Okay, so Zulili, how do you feel about these? Do you have these emotions, or which of these do you have? Anxiety or fear. Anxiety and fear around what? Around what topics in your life? Everything. Okay. Who else got a three? What do you feel in terms of these? All of them. All of them. Okay. <laughs> I like that one. In specific areas of life? Yeah. Which particular areas? Um, me, um, when, when I'm ready to start to like think positive about having positive things happening, it's hard for me to like, uh, to believe that it's possible for for me to actually go back to be the person that I was before all of this. Um, so it's like I struggle, I go back and forth with it where can this really happen? Like, oh, am I just fooling myself mm -hmm. or, you know? So it's like it's like a battle day in and out. Like, And I, I try to explain this to people and they're just like, I don't understand what are you <laughs> so upset about? <laughs> Like, you should be happy, and like, I'm just like, I, I'm trying. <laughs> but it's just like, my mind is just like, I'll get up in the morning, and I'm just like, okay, we're gonna be happy today. <laughs> and then I'll go and I brush my teeth, and then it's just like, a whole different person come in, and I'm just like, yeah. it's just like, I'm just, my sister tells me I have like a whole bunch of personalities. No. She doesn't know who she's gonna meet when I come, come out my door. Well, but it's all you. They're all yeah. aspects of you. Yeah. Remember the eye. Gurdjieff with the eyes. We have a bunch of eyes within us. You don't know who you're going to meet necessarily depending on what thoughts you're having, what's provoking you, what's causing that. It's very difficult 
to have just gone through a life-altering event like you've gone through and remember who you were once before. Very difficult. Especially because you're never going to be that person again. You're going to be a changed version of that person. But if you're not seeing that yet, it makes sense that your optimism would just take a hit. Yeah, because I was saying to my sister this morning, I was, I was just like, I'm done with being this, this dirty person. And she was just like, what are you talking about? I was like, I feel dirty. I just feel so, I just feel mucky and just like, like I just want to like just rip off everything, and just start all over again, just get a new skin, get a new everything. And I'm just like, I just feel just like, just like I have like so much. I just want to be clean. I'm just tired of this feeling that I feel where it's just like, I bought a book the other day and I told her, you know, because I heard you talking about reading. I was just like, oh, I used to like to do that. So I, you know, I bought the, the, this book. It's a um, Gabriel Union uh, book. Okay. So I, I, I read the back of it. And I was just like, let's see what this is about. Maybe I'll be interested. And I bought it two weeks ago and I'm sitting there like, so when am I going to turn this page already? And I'm looking at the book like, oh, it's so nice. It's probably good to read. I was like, yeah, but I'll do it tomorrow. And then like I'll find something else to do, and I'll be fi I find myself sitting just doing nothing, like twirling my fingers, and, and the book's there, and I'm like, maybe you should do this. I was like, or maybe you can go and start your channel, hello. And then I'm just like, oh, maybe I'll just lay in the bed. And then I'll do that, and then I'll be so mad at myself. Like, I can't believe you laid here for hours, like daydreaming. And, uh, when you're laying in the bed for hours, what are you processing? Um, things that I should be doing. I'm like, okay, so tomorrow we're going to make sure we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna comb our hair. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna put on something nice, and we're gonna go outside and we're gonna laugh. We're gonna have a great time. Up. And then. Then you read the book that right. you bought, and, and, and I you're never, supposed to I never, you. I never do it. Like. In the morning, it's hard for me to get up and like, well, when I'm not coming to school, um, and I have to like take my daughter to school and stuff, um, I don't do my hair, I don't do my makeup, I don't, I only do this for, so when Thursdays and, uh, when Tuesdays and Thursdays come, like I get excited because like now I have to comb my hair, and now I have to do my makeup, so I have no excuse. So it's like my, my daughter would say to me, she was like, oh, look who's here. And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, oh. <laughs> Princess Trisha is here. She's like, I, I, she's like, wow. Oh, do you only comb your hair when you go to school? And I'm just like, yes. Okay, but that's a start. <laughs> that's a start. No. Right. Those are the things that we have to work with with clients. Two days a week, she combs her hair, she gets out of bed, and she comes to school. That is not minimal. You should reward yourself for things like when that. You when you are depressed. You can't even get up out of bed. You've been depressed. I've been depressed. Monday through Friday, I have a place to come. This morning I had a client at 6 a.m. Because I start at 6, 5.30, 6 a.m. I see clients. Because I have them all over the world. And it just works before work or whatever. And I actually prefer earlier readings. But there was a time that I couldn't, remember? I would tell her, oh, I have a client. And then I, I just couldn't. I couldn't. I was depressed. So the fact that last week and this week, to talk to this client at 6 a.m., I was able to get up. I'm not going to minimize that I did that. Do not minimize. And you go, yes, I get up twice a week and I comb my hair. And, and maybe, you do your makeup. Maybe next week it'll be three times. So where were you five months ago? Where were you five weeks ago? Where were you last year? Because I've been here almost a year, and I've known you for a year almost. You're a new person. You've made a lot of progress in this year. We can't minimize that. That's our job as a therapist with our client. Do not let your client off the hook with what they're not admitting about themselves in terms of their success. Depression does not let you get out of the bed. What did you score on the optimal happiness? On the first one that we did. Oh, this is 108. 108. 
somewhat happy or moderately happy, satisfied. This is what the average person scores. Last year, she would have scored lower. We have to acknowledge the little baby steps that we're taking, people. There are life events that will knock you off your seat, knock you to the ground, knock you to your knees, knock you on your ass. Do not minimize that. That is a huge part of this profession. Baby steps. You help the client cognitively restructure when they can see and understand that they're doing big things. So you said you bought a book. Does everyone remember this? This is called the Trans-Theoretical Model of Behavior Change. There's five stages, pre-contemplation, contemplation, preparation, action, and maintenance. It's believed that change takes about two years, more or less, before we can make it our own. Pre-contemplation, you're not even thinking you have a problem. Contemplating, you're thinking about it. She is in contemplation because she's sitting there thinking about what she should be doing, thinking about recording her YouTube channel, and she's in preparation because she already bought her book. So she is closer to action than she's been in the last year. When you can show clients this type of stuff, they can't get caught up in their negative thinking. This is our job. Can you see that you've made progress? Yes. <laughs> Sometimes we have to be reminded and remind ourselves mm -hmm. that these baby steps make a difference. Because we have this all or none thinking. We have this idea that it's perfection or nothing. Prince or pauper. God or shit complex, I call it. Mm -hmm. Zero to a hundred. Mm -hmm. No. There's a whole spectrum. Draw on the line, Trisha. Where are you now between 0 to 100? Probably at 5. At 5? Okay. <laughs> but you're 5 closer to where you were. You're 5 closer to 100. You're not at 0. That's right. Just the fact that you're not at zero. You have to remind yourself of that. You're not at zero. And it doesn't matter if it took a year to make the, that five little degrees forward. You did it. You didn't go back. But my, um, my daughter, she wants me to go back to that, that mother that was I'm trying. Like, I, I, she's like, can we go for a walk? And then I would like come up with an excuse like, it's you know what, the sun's too hot. Let's wait till the sun goes down. And then the sun goes down. I'm like, oh, it's too dark. It's dangerous. You can't go. <laughs> you know. So I'm just like, I was so mad at myself yesterday because I was, she was just like, oh, can we just at least blow bubbles? And I'm just like, we can blow it in the house. <laughs> you okay. Know? And that was my question. What instead of focusing on what you can't do, mm -hmm. what can you do. She wants to blow bubbles, you blow bubbles in the house. Did you blow bubbles? Yeah. Did you give her what she wanted? Yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. What happened? Uh, the dean just wanted us to remind the students that there are 45 employers downstairs so that they can walk around. And okay, so they're going to be here till 2. Yeah. So you'll have time. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. So, Instead of saying later or making an excuse, how about no to walking outside? You can tell her that the sun's too hot. But instead, we can read a book. Instead, we can take a walk inside the house. Instead, we can blow the bubbles. Also, since you were so mad at yourself, maybe you can push yourself to do one thing. OK, we're going to walk to the, to the end of the block and back. And then you're satisfying her, and you're satisfying yourself that you did something. Or plan for the future. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow or three weeks from now, and then you have three weeks to get into action. And you set, like Mr. Ibrach said, a limit. 
You're not going to just go outside. There's just commercials. It's bullshit. It's about this migraine medication. Have you guys seen it? Yeah. The lady, let's play yeah. pirate and shit. Oh, please. Yeah. Every time I see that commercial, no. I want to vomit. <laughs> Mom, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah she was let's play pirate. What are we doing tomorrow? Yeah. 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 It's it's so red. Such <laughs> bullshit. Beyond. Right. Beyond. Yeah. I mean, when I see that, I am like, oh my god. Make mothers feel worse now, right? <laughs> Every time I see commercials like that, I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> That's not true. It's not true. That woman with a migraine yesterday, I went and one of my colleagues had a migraine and we were standing by the window and I just saw her go like this. She was by the copy machine. I'm like, are you okay? She goes, I have a migraine. No, it's Please, the sun is bothering you. You're at work. You're forced. She's an admissions person. She had a student in her room because I was like, do you want me to bring you something? She goes, no, no, I'm with a student. You have to force yourself to finish your work day? Oh, please, are you going to be go playing pirate and dress up with your kid? Why? And, and Bunch of bullshit. I do it all the time, too. I'm like sitting there yesterday going, oh, it's so nice out. I really should go for a walk. Oh, let me get on my butt. And I just sat there. I just, oh, what time? Is it dark yet? Let me see. <laughs> so I didn't have to go do it. And I'm the same so way. The same day. Someday... Sunday, I said to myself, Francis, wear leggings, because at least the leggings will feel a little tight, and I won't be in baggy sweatpants that I feel comfortable in, because I put on weight, and I keep putting on weight, and I'm frustrated about it, but I'm just, I'm not in action mode yet. I'm not going to Orange Theory yet. I called, I got the text, but I'm not there. Yesterday I said to her, oh, I bought an audio book. I'm going to go to the treadmill and walk on. Yeah, okay. I walked straight to my bed. Let's get real. I heard one paragraph of the book, paused it, and still I paused on my phone. So sometimes when you talk to someone, that's also one of our goals in therapy, is when you share with your client the same thing, that you do the same things, and all their clients do the same things, you're like, oh. Because someone last week, I think it was Nella, said that she sees people on fake, what I call fake book, and you know they're putting all of these events that they're living their life. Oh please, they're taking it's a snapshot. Two years to oh. get that far. So <laughs> you know, so in therapy, when we can share and go, oh my god, I have the exact same thing. You're like, oh wow, I'm ahead of the game. So this is where we share realistically with clients so that we can help them. But two days a week, you're combing your hair and you're getting dressed and you're coming. For a long time, you weren't even coming. Yeah. You're showing up. Are you kidding? I'm thrilled to see your beautiful smile. So your sister doesn't know what she's talking about. No, we all have different personalities. We all have different faces and masks that we put on. Remember the archetypes. So we're constantly, depending on where, on where we are, but the fact that you're here, that's action. So you bought the book, you're in preparation. The fact that you lay in bed and contemplate the things that you want to be doing, you're in contemplation. We're in different phases. And these are the things that we help our, our clients with. Anyone get a one or a two? You got a one? one. Which one? Okay, I got, I got a, a one. two. It's a resilient scale. Okay, what do you think? Do you have a lot of these? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> okay, do you feel that you have optimism? I'll occasionally get it. Okay. Um, I feel like I have it. I have a goal to work towards. Okay. The motivation sometimes is like she said, you know, it's too hot outside. Let's not do that. That's what happens to me. That same thing will happen to me. I'll plan something. I have a whole tote full of outdoor activity stuff. I mean, you name it, we have Nerf guns, all of that. I moved Nerf gun war inside my house. So that way we would not it go outside. It doesn't break things, and it's not hot. Yeah, yeah. I do that. We live in Florida. <laughs> it is hot as hell. I try to explain that to my children, but their thing is, you don't like to leave the house. Have you gone out there? <laughs> it is hot. It's hot. And we live in Florida. It makes perfect sense. I mean, we are forced to go outside year round. You go to these up north states, and everyone's biking and hiking. They only have summer two months anyway, and of course they're outside. 
We're supposed to be doing that year round. Screw you. I also want nine or ten months of hibernation in winter clothes and stuff yes. like that. Yes. yes. Those are the best. Especially when it's like a snow globe outside and you go, I have no effing reason to be out there. <laughs> Get real. We are forced to be in an abnormal situation where most of the it country is this. still <laughs> snowing. <laughs> They're not so outside. Nice. No one's beating themselves up for that. But because we are the outlier, <laughs> we should be outside all the time. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Do you feel altruistic? What's that? Um, that you do things for other people without expecting something in return. <laughs> OK. I always do for others, and I don't expect that. That's why I'm so pissed at my mom. OK, because she's not recognizing. Because she's being self-centered when everything I do is for, for her okay. and everyone else. Okay, so if these are the components of resilience, and you have some, and we'll continue down, you can start seeing that you're more resilient than you're giving yourself credit for. And look what you just said. You do do for others. Now what you're expecting, and expectations will screw us up, what you're expecting is someone to pay attention, notice, or, which it's your job, is to put a boundary on your altruism. It is our job to put boundaries. Your family does not want you to change. Your family will suck you dry. That's just life. You must be the one that sets your boundary. That's why working, so many people hide with their work. So many people want to work rather than stay home with their kids. Because at work you have a manual. You have a schedule. You have a time to come in. You have to time to go. You're getting a compensation. You have rules. If you do this, you get fired. If you do this, you get promoted. We don't have that at home. We need to treat our homes like we treat our jobs, with boundaries and rules and rule books and handbooks. Write those rules for yourself. Do you have a moral compass? Do you have faith in spirituality? Do you have humor? Too yes. Much. <laughs> Too much of that. Do you have a role model? No? OK, so that's the only one she said no to. Do you have social support? Yes, I got my pictures. Okay. <laughs> Do you know how to face your fear? No. OK, so two. Do you have a meaning or a purpose in life? Yeah, I think I found it coming back to school. OK, and training, you're in school. So of the 10 components, she's only lacking two. She's more resilient than she gives herself credit for. We're more than we think we are. Yes. Uh, I know I'm doing a personal judgment right now okay. about what we're talking about, but I do see that, well, I want to ask, would you think that you guys are procrastinating in some of your uh, goals, because I hear a lot, oh, I'm thinking about this, and I'm planning all these out, but I'm finding this, like, excuse, like, I, I, what I'm, I'm judging as an excuse, which, oh, it's too hard outside, it's too, whatever, another reason for not to do things. Would that be, like, they're procrastinating to get that hump, to, to break that cycle, to keep going? But if they're in contemplation and preparation, you can't skip those steps. Mm -hmm. And maybe, and this is our job to ask the right question. Where is it taught, or why is it better to play outside than inside? Where or who are they using as their comparison, as their model, that that's what mothers or ladies should do? TV commercials. <laughs> TV commercials, look at that. That's the role model. All the commercials say you should be outside. <laughs> but I just told you that people in the winter, people that live in many states out of the country, are wrapped in blankets and in Ugg boots and in winter coats for eight, ten months out of the year. I like so they're okay, but you're not? In England, my, my games where, um, the, what is it, the apostles? The, the, uh, what are the board? Rats? Scrabble, <clears throat> um, chess. Board game. Why do you know the word in Spanish? <laughs> but is it a board game? Puzzles. Uh, puzzles. Puzzles. Okay. Rompecabezas. 
rompecabezas. <laughs> 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 rompecabezas. <laughs> <laughs> um, that and like you know, staying just like you said, you know, on the couch with your blanket, watching TV and any other board game like cards. <laughs> that that kind of those are still games. Yeah. What you if know? you have a child in a wheelchair? What if you have a child with a disability that can't go outside? So now that child's not a child? Yeah. It is our job to question what we're thinking. Get out of our box, people. Or even find who you you're comparing play. yourself to. There's like places now that you can go play and it's inside. Yes, so my daughter like works at Monkey job. Joe's, oh, yeah. I love where Monkey it's Joe's. all of those I love bounce houses. Yeah. And the parents sit and the kids play. There is a reason Somewhere. that those places. Oh, yeah. Some parents. Some parents. <laughs> Some parents. Okay. Are there parents allowed on the bounce houses? Oh, yeah. I've seen plenty. Okay. I mean, I used to go on the bounce houses <laughs> when I was skinny and little back then. Now I wouldn't go on the bounce house. I'll break it. <laughs> but I'll make friends. Those places exist because there's a need. Bounce houses, they'll hold. Of course. There's a need for those places. You think you're the only parents that don't like the heat of Miami? Come on. That's like everything. And then you place Extreme Action Park, the whole inside theme mm -hmm. park. Yes. Come on, let's be realistic here. Well, I, I so, see my son outside. I sit on a chair under a, a tree. And he just runs around. It's not like it doesn't even get to two minutes when he's like home, home. Like to go. He's like. Because it's hot. And I'm like. And go I'm to like, the park. <laughs> The kids have their little play thing, and what do the parents have? Benches. benches. If the parents weren't supposed to sit, there would be no benches. But, one but park yet has park designers pirate. know that there's a bench. One park has a pirate boat. Maybe we're meant to be pirates in that boat. Like okay. Well, <laughs> I'll just be a circus. Maybe. Wear the hat. Yeah. Call it a day. Pirates just sit on a boat all day. <laughs> it is our job to question our thinking. It is our job to question our negative thinking. That is the entire field of positive psychology. We are so used to criticizing. We are so used to that there are negatives. And I'm the first one. I say it over and over again. I love the find the subconscious problem. But it's our responsibility to also see what we're doing right. Okay, let me read you some of the mind traps. All or nothing thinking, we read that one. Overgeneralization, a lot of you are doing this here, you're all bad mothers. You see a single negative event, such as a romantic rejection or a career reversal as a nervous, a never ending pattern of defeat by using the words always or never when you think about it. So you never used to get up. Now you're getting up twice. <laughs> hey, it's not never. Mental filter. You pick out a single negative detail and dwell on it exclusively. I was just going to look at you, and she's nodding her head. So that your vision of all reality becomes darkened, like the drop of ink that discolors a beaker of water. Discounting the positive. You reject positive experiences by insisting that they don't count. If you do a good job, you may tell yourself that it wasn't good enough or that anyone could have done as well. Discounting the positive takes the joy out of life and makes you feel inadequate and unrewarded. I do that one a lot. You do that with your mom. You're minimizing all your hard work. And you come here twice a week. You turn your work in on time. You turn in quality work that you show up and you minimize it because of this other person. Jumping to conclusions. You interpret things negatively when there are no facts to support your conclusion. Oh, I love this one. Mind reading. Without checking it out, you arbitrarily conclude that someone is reacting negative to you. Okay, I see a lot of nods. That's very narcissistic. What are they saying about <laughs> it's not all about you, bitch. <laughs> like, oh my god, my mom did that to me. Uh, I did talk text with my sister, and we were talking about a guy at work, and she goes, Are you talking about me? I said, Why are you in my business? I was text talking, talking her, not you. 
Well, you were talking about me. <laughs> yes, I was talking about you. Narcissism. It's all about me. In the narcissism, in the narcissistic myth, Narcissus, his, went, his mother went to the oracle at Delphi. And the oracle in Greece said, cover all the window, all the mirrors, don't let him ever, ever look at